Hi there everybody and uh, welcome to another video. On today's video I have my Mercedes S-Class, the S350 diesel and uh, I'm having an issue with where the fuel gauge is not registering that I have fuel in the tank. So basically um, sometimes it, deci it decides to read a little bit of fuel but uh, this uh, past few days it's just been staying on zero even though I have fuel you can see the car is running well but the gauge says I have no fuel at all um, and this happened the other day just after I top up I put a hundred pounds worth of fuel gauge went up uh, to three quarters more or less and then and then it dropped to zero and then it went up again and then it dropped and it's been doing that so um what i'm gonna do today is i'm gonna try and read if there are any fault codes registered in on the obd computer and uh so we can tackle this issue and obviously if you have a similar issue then perhaps this video will help you um the fuel uh, sender unit for this car it's sitting uh, in the under the back seat there so we have to lift that seat up and then uh, take it out and that's where the the uh, fuel gauge or fuel sender unit is the fuel gauge is this one here but this the the sender unit is the one that measures how much fuel is in it. Okay, so um, this is the fault code I have. It's saying um, fuel level from control unit A1. Instrument cluster is impossible. And the fault is 143B0. Um, I have another fault code here, but I don't think this is related 17170 <clears throat> that might be related to something else because when I had a I had a few problem issue where a mouse ate all my my um, fuel pipes <laughs> so uh, and I never cleared any fault codes from that time so um, that could be related to that I wonder if I can actuate the fuel gauge. Maybe not from, uh, maybe from the um, cluster, instrument cluster. menu so that is the fault code i'm getting which is under the motor electronics these other ones are okay all of these are okay i have an issue with the uh, rear sum or the sum here door actually um but these ones as well but these are these are not related to the fuel gauge. Everything else seems relatively okay. Instrument cluster. Let's have a look. There's an F there. Means some sort of issue. And it reads. Right. So can signal tank capacity from control unit rear. Some is impossible. So that could be related to the um, fuel sender unit. Actuation of mechanical instrument pointers to maximum position. So if we actuate the gauges, we can see if they're working. It says move instrument pointer, stop actuation. So F3 here. So I'm going to press F3 and see if something happens 
Okay, so I think you saw that all the gauges actually work in there. That means I haven't got a gauge situation. Okay, can exit that. And that is what I'm going to be investigating now, the fuel sender unit. Um, so I have to do a little bit of research on this fault code and the other one and then take it from there. Okay, this is another fault code I have. It says signal of component B41 fuel gauge sensor left half of tank is not within valid range. Um, that is under, so that fault was under the rear sum here. Here it says uh, rear sum signal acquisition and actuation module of the rear side. Um, if, if I look at that, that's where that fault code was. So So that particular one is related. I'm not sure what this one is. Let's have a look at that. Because it's showing a fault there as well. But that looks to be a door or something. Signal wire started actuation. Started actuation. The thing is some of the faults here, they may actually be from something previous. Because as I said, I had a I had an issue with uh, where the mice ate all my fuel uh, lines and then... Okay, so I'm, I've deleted that. So I will delete a few of these and then obviously see if they come back, then I can look into those. But I won't delete the ones I relate to the fuel gauge. Um, right, so again, I'm gonna look into that. Also, just looking at the live data here, it says uh, fuel gauge sensor B41, left half of tank is reading 215 and the one on the right half of tank is reading 103. And it's saying, as we saw on the uh, fault code, that the left one is out of range. So um, that's something we'll have to check when we replace it, um, if the range will go more like the one on the right okay so i'm gonna have a look at the uh, the connection for the fuel um, sender here um, which is located in the back seat so the computer is showing that the left side is at fault um, now from the research i've been doing it seems like uh, most people have an issue with the left side um, so we need to lift this seat and take it out. It, this seat is just plugged in. I already uh, unplugged it basically, but it is. it was quite hard to pull it. So whether it's thus on my car and every car, I don't know. But uh, I struggled a little bit, not a lot, but uh, I had to put a lot of force into pulling this up. First I did one side and then I went to the other side and put a lot of effort to pull the other side out as well. And then the whole seat just slides out so you can actually <clears throat> put it to one side and you will find an opening here uh, which you will be able to lift up Actually, one thing um, just wanted to mention is that when you lift this seat up, 
you may find that there are a couple of little metal clips that uh, come out and funny enough I don't know what I've done with them <laughs> uh, where are they it's two little metal clips oh, they're here okay so this is what I found lingering somewhere here uh, I'm not sure how they are supposed to fit but it will be something that I'm gonna have to figure out later um, because it may be that they sit, sit around something like this or so I'm not really sure if anybody knows let me know uh, but uh, you may find those two little clips lingering about and then if you lift this cover um, you can sort of this is like a little cup here which you can kind of turn and open it if it's a little bit hard you could push it a bit with your screwdriver and in here you will find this cable and that cable is what I want to do is I want to wiggle this cable a bit and see if the um, actual gauge does anything um, just to see if it's something to do with the so the gauge is still on zero um, and not going up But occasionally it, it goes up so that's why I want to wiggle the cable and see if it if it's something to do with the cable maybe even unplug the cable and replug it well, so at the end of the day it's an electronic okay I disconnected that and obviously that uh, car went off because I disconnected the fuel pump which I reconnected now fuel pump is pumping and uh, nope that gauge is not doing anything and I can't really see any corrosion on, on here so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out and see if we can physically see something going on with the actual there's a floater and a, and a sender unit inside of there um, I want to see also if, I, if it's replaceable uh, and by the looks of it I need to remove all these 10 mil nuts here so I'm gonna go ahead and get some tools okay so I'm just undoing this uh, 10 mil nuts here which they seem to be covered in some kind of uh, paint so that paint is uh, cracking a little bit and, but th these are really uh, they're not tight at all very very easy to open so let's try to lift this up now there's a bit of paint on them so uh, that's why they are machine is struggling to open it a little bit but um, I'm gonna go ahead and open all of them okay I have all the six 10 mil nuts out and uh, but there's a lot of dirt around here and here so before I remove this plate I'm just going to hoover a little bit hoover up all the dirt as much as I can just to avoid anything going into the the fuel there so I got the nuts here and because they have this paint black paint on it that black paint is gone all around so just try to clean it a little bit and uh, avoid unnecessary issues okay having uh, cleaned that out we can lift this uh, cover out try and discover what's in here 
and uh, let's lift this cover out as well and uh, we have a uh, wiring there but I don't see anything else okay I think I should try and uh, disconnect this really might need two hands for that so I'll just go ahead and disconnect that okay so after messing around with this uh, few uh, sender unit for a while I finally discover how you can remove it um, basically in there there are two 10 mil uh, nuts those two 10 mil nuts are what you need to undo in order to get that fuel sender unit out so I don't know how to get this light to stay there okay I'm just gonna try and show you where they are so those two in there are the two 10 mil that you need to remove that the, the sender unit um, that for the gauge, that is that wire there which we disconnect from the same bracket. Um, so I, I've just been playing around, taking it, disconnecting it and reconnecting it. And also I, I already removed the sender unit, which I'm just going to remove now. And I'm going to show you, it's a little bit difficult to film, but these are the 10 mil plastic um, nuts that we need to remove. So I got one out and then there's, it's quite deep, all of these. Then there's another one. And now you kind of have to pull that out. So all of that section will come out, but you have to get your hand all the way in there. It's a bit difficult to do it otherwise. Um, and also you will struggle a bit fiddling with it in order to get it out. But you can disconnect it. And this is what the sender unit it's all about here basically there we are we have an earth connected just there we could disconnect that make things life a little bit easier but that's the sender unit the one that the OBD is picking up has been faulty um, so I already removed it and uh, I checked the resistance on it and it seems to be working. Um, so what I've done is I just, um, it, it seems to work on some kind of magnetic field. So as this thing moves up and down with fuel, there is a, a little magnet in the center of this gauge in, in there. There's a little magnet and that magnet seems to send the signal to this um, electronic bit here. And that's how the car knows where the fuel is. So if this thing in here is uh, failing for some reason, then that little magnet is not going to be um well the magnet is still doing what it has to do but if that is failing then it's sending the wrong signal to the computer because that just moves up and down so that nothing can really go wrong with the mechanism here unless the floater is not uh floating but um in my case i noticed that obviously the gauge works sometimes and sometimes it doesn't now since i've been messing around with this the gauge seems to be working all the time but um, I wanted to show you where this uh, gauge is and how you can remove it if you are sure 
you need to replace it. In my case, I'm going to be doing some further diagnostics to see, well, I'm going to refit this back and then see what the gauge does again. Um, and also I would recommend if you're doing this, uh, make sure you don't have a lot of fuel in your tank. <laughs> Otherwise, if you have a lot of fuel, you have to dip your hand in fuel, which you don't really want to. Um, so make sure it's quite low if you're going to decide to work on this. Um, refitting this is also a little bit of a maneuvering. It just fits. It, this hooks up, up. It kind of hooks up by itself. Um, it aligns itself as you fit it back. And obviously you put your two 10 mils there. Um, so, so far, uh, I haven't exactly worked out what is going on here, but uh, I think I definitely worked out that the computer is telling me this gauge, it's faulty. Um, but like I said, it started working again, so, um, so I'm going to refit it, drive a little bit, and see what happens and see if the gauge collapses again. I mean, starts reading zero again. And if it does that, then I might go ahead and just replace this. It might be that this fails at certain, during certain conditions. Um, if the car is hot or cold or whatever, I'm not sure. Uh, it, it could be, yeah, a condition under which it fails. So when you take it out, it seems to be working fine. Um, or it was dirty or something, I I'm not sure. So we'll see. So at the moment, after being messing around with the fuel uh, sender unit, the car is actually reading the quantities. Now, I, I believe that's probably about right, what it's measuring. Um, so I just temporarily put it back, not fully, but uh, the reason is that I want to test drive it a little bit. So I'm going to put some fuel now and see if that goes up a bit. I'm only going to put about 10 pounds, see if that gauge moves. Um, but so far it's been working uh, after, obviously after taking it out, messing around with it and putting it back in. <laughs> so if it's uh, miraculously cured, then that's a good thing. But otherwise, uh, if it fails again, then I can check the fault codes again because I cleared all the fault codes and there's no fault codes on the car at the moment. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so so I got uh, 15 pounds of fuel in there, which is eight liters, ridiculous. And the gauge is gone a little bit higher. So at least I think it's working. So I'm going to test it for a few days and then uh, see how that goes. So the fuel gauge has been steady on working. Um, just going down as I drive, I notice uh, no, no issues anymore. So it hasn't dropped um, since I messed around with the sender unit. Since I removed it, cleaned it a little bit and put it back, it's been working. Um, by now it would have failed a few times to be honest so before it was intermittent um, and even it was most of the time it was actually not working but uh, I'm gonna put some more petrol today I'm gonna put maybe 50 pounds of diesel or so hopefully it takes me to half a tank I, I'm not sure <laughs> maybe not but I'm gonna put 50 or 60 pounds so I can keep testing the gauge for a little bit um, see if it's, if it works carries on working um, if it if it fails again then I'm pretty sure it's gonna be uh, I'm gonna have to replace that sender unit but uh, it's clear to me that uh, since I been messing around with it it's been working so let's put some fuel and then I'll keep checking it so I got the 50 pounds in and uh, it's just reading under half a tank. So um, 
it seems to be operating and um, just gonna monitor that today and tomorrow and uh, if that remains okay without collapsing I'm going to assume that the gauge is okay so far the fuel gauge has been working since I removed it um, so I think I'm gonna end this video now um, and uh, well I hope it helps you if you're kind of tackling a similar situation where the needle your, your uh, the needle for the fuel goes all the way to zero um, I've done a 50 nearly 100 mile trip today and the needle didn't go to zero uh, previously it was constantly on zero since, since I removed it it's been good so um, I'll post the video now if it helps and at least in, in any way even if it helps you uh, locate where the fuel sender unit is then uh, then that's great so having said that hope the video helps don't forget to subscribe and uh, we'll see you on the next video thank you for watching